Good afternoon. I'm going to be telling you how to develop a roll of film this afternoon. Um, the first thing that you need to know is that this part that's sticking out of the camera cassette is called the leader. Before you develop your film, you're going to want to trim off the leader so that the edges are rounded and that'll make the film go on to the reel much easier. So I've just cut off the end of the leader and I've rounded the edges. When you're opening a canister of film, and you're going to wait to do this in the dark, you're going to want to open the flat side of the canister. This is the can opener that you're going to use. It's just like any bottle opener that you would use. You're going to open the flat side. As we've said before, this is the nipple. The nipple goes down and you open the flat side. Once that's done, the next very important thing that you need to do is set up your chemicals. Just as in baking a cake, you wouldn't bake a cake if you didn't have all your ingredients. So you wouldn't develop film or even begin to develop film if you don't have all of your chemicals set up first. Also, all of your chemicals need to be brought to 68 degrees. So that's going to be the first thing that you're going to do. The first chemical in the process is D76. This is your developer. We are going to dilute some of our chemicals um, even before that, however, I'm going to put on my safety goggles. When we dilute chemicals, we do it in a very specific way. Um, we're going to add the water to the pitcher first. And just as you might know this from chemistry class, you put the water in first for safety purposes. So, if you're pouring one liquid into another liquid, the possibility of the liquid that's in here splashing on you is much greater. So, in order to reduce the amount of splash of chemicals, we're going to put water in here first so that if anything does splash, it's a higher concentration of water than of chemical. We're going to dilute our D76 at a 1 to 1 ratio. I have my light tight tank. The light tight tank holds 24 ounces total. So, in a 1 to 1 ratio, we're going to have equal parts of both chemical and water. So that means 12 ounces of chemical and 12 ounces of water. In any ratio where you're diluting something in this class, the first number is always the chemical and the second number is always the water. In this case, both the chemical and the water are the same amount. 12 ounces of water and 12 ounces of chemical. So, I'm going to fill my pitcher with 12 ounces of water and then I'll add my 12 ounces of D76. I'm going to put my pitcher on this flat surface and wait for the water to stop moving. And it's perfect. So, I have my water, 12 ounces, now I'm going to add 12 ounces D76 for a total of 24 ounces. Now, as I said earlier, all of our chemicals need to be 68 degrees. Not 69 or not 67, but they need to be 68 degrees. To determine that, I'm going to put this thermometer in here. I'm going to set this chemical pitcher right in front of the D76. That tells me that that's D76 so that I don't get them confused. The next chemical in the process is stop bath. In this case, I'm going to use reclaimed stop bath. Whenever you have the opportunity to use reclaimed chemicals, please do that. It saves the environment and it saves money. Um, if I were diluting this chemical, I would dilute it at a 1 to 3 ratio. So this stop bath has not been diluted yet. The reclaimed stop bath has been diluted. So I'm not going to have to dilute that. When I use reclaimed stop bath in this process, I just pour it into this pitcher. One to three ratio, the chemical comes first, the water comes second in that ratio. So the chemical, you have one part chemical to three parts water. For a one to three ratio, I need six ounces of chemical and 18 ounces of water. Again, I would start with the water for safety purposes Again, in this case, in order to save the environment and money, I'm going to use reclaimed stop bath. So I'm just simply going to pour 24 ounces of stop bath into my pitcher. You'll notice that the stop bath is yellow. 
This is called indicator stop bath. We can reclaim it and reclaim it over and over again until it turns purple. So when this turns purple, it means that it's exhausted and we can't use it anymore. While it's still yellow, it's still good. So this is my indicator stop bath. I have six ounces. If I were diluting six ounces of chemical, 18 ounces of water, I'm going to put my thermometer in there. The next chemical in the process is fixer, rapid fixer. Again, I'm going to use reclaimed chemicals on this. Rapid fixer is not diluted. So whether you're using reclaimed chemicals or using the the jug that you get from it out down here, it's going to be 24 ounces of fixer. Again, this is not diluted. Fixer and permawash are not diluted, so I'm just going to pour 24 ounces into this pitcher and put a thermometer in it. The final chemical in this process is PhotoFlow. You won't, you'll use this very last, and this is something that you don't have to prepare. This is already prepared for you, so you just need to take out this uh, bowl when you need it. Okay, now that I have all of my chemicals prepared, I can set up my workstation for loading my reels with my film. Now, as you know, putting the film onto the reel has to be done in absolute darkness. When film is exposed to light, it's exposed. So, even though this leader is exposed, there are no pictures on it. Everything inside the canister, however, has my photos on it. So I'm going to do the next part of the process in total darkness. Now, you wouldn't be able to see that, so we're going to leave the lights on. But typically, at this point in the process, you would need to turn the lights out. Before you turn the lights out, however, I think it's important that you standardize your procedures, that you do this, this process the same way every single time. The way I like to do this is set up my, uh, my light tight tank and the top right next to each other. I'm going to put my film and the can opener right in front of that, and I'm going to put my two reels of film next to that. So once I turn the lights out, and I can't see anything, I know where everything is. I do it the same way every single time. Okay, so let's pretend now that the lights are out. The first thing I would do is open the film canister with the, film, with the can opener. Then I'm going to push on the nipple part, and you're going to try to hold the film by the edges at all times. You don't want your fingerprints all over your film. So hold the film by the edges. You've been practicing getting the film onto the reels in class, but in the dark it's a little bit different. So you're going to bend the film just slightly. Find the two notches on the reels, and I like to put my fingers on top of those to guide my film, especially when it's dark. Once your film is underneath those notches, you can grab it and just pull it around the reel very gently. Then I take my left hand, I put it on top of one of the notches. Take my right hand, and I use the thumb on my right hand to gently guide the film onto the reel. Now this is the only time when you really should be touching the film. Especially since you're touching this outside portion, that's okay. This backside, where all of the emulsion is, you want to make sure that you're not touching that. So, I'm going to lead the film onto the reel. I notice that it's bunching up, so I might straighten that out a little bit. Continue to reel that on slowly. If I were to have a mistake, if something were to bunch up or stop, if I wasn't able to get this on, I would stop, pull the entire roll of film off, and start over again. When film touches itself, when it's not put on the reels properly and it touches itself, chemicals are not able to get to all sides of the film and you'll have sections of your film that is not developed. So this part is important. 
Eventually, once you've done this a few times, it'll get easier and it won't be as stressful in the dark. When you get to the very end, sometimes you'll have tape at the end on the spool, sometimes it'll just be the spool. Go ahead and just pull that off. Now, I'm only developing one roll of film right now. Typically, you'll be working with a partner, and so both your film and your partner's film will be in one tank. If ever you're just developing one roll of film, however, put your roll of film on the bottom and then put an empty reel on top of that. That'll help to reduce the amount of splashing that goes on in the canister when you're developing. Then I'm going to put the light tight tank on the, on the, sorry, the light tight cap onto the tank. At this point, you can turn the lights back on. Everything else, though, that I was just doing is done in complete darkness. Now, this tank is specially designed so that we can take off this top. This lid is called the vent lid, and that gives us a place where we can pour our chemicals in and out of this canister. Again, the canister is designed so that I can take this off and no light gets into my film. So taking this off does not harm your film at all. So now we're ready to develop our film. The first chemical again is D76. We have it all ready right here. Check the temperature. If this temperature had not been 68 degrees, even before I put my film into the canister, I would have created a water bath over here in the sink and I would put my pitchers in there to either cool them down or warm them up. So you need to decide. Um, do that, however, before you put your film into the tank so that while you're doing that, your, your chemicals are coming to temperature. They're being brought to temperature. With the film that we're using right now, we develop for nine and three quarters minutes. So, here's my timer. I'm going to move this to nine minutes and then I'm going to turn this back to 45 seconds. So I have 9 minutes and 45 seconds on my timer. As soon as I pour my chemical into the tank, I'm going to start my timer. So my chemicals are at 68 degrees. I'll pour my chemical in. Same time, I'll start my timer. Next we're going to agitate. You're going to agitate once every minute for nine and three quarter minutes. Agitation looks like this. Over, back, over, back, and tap. Now the purpose of agitating is to move the chemicals through the film. Once chemicals actually come into contact with the film, they exhaust immediately. So that means they touch the film and they're no longer good. In order to get fresh chemicals touching our film, we need to agitate once every minute. You don't want to do it any more than that, and you don't want to do it any less than that. Um, it's not a martini, so you're not shaking it like this. It's a very simple over and back, over and back, and tapping it. Now the tapping even has a purpose as well. Frequently when we let chemicals sit for a long time, you can see here that bubbles have already started to form on the outside of this canister right here. And you'll know, oh, and there are even more over here. You know when you leave a bottle of water sitting on a table, that frequently a lot of water, or air bubbles will collect on the outside. If you have an air bubble on your film, that's an entire section of your film that is not going to be developed. So we tap the canister to release those air bubbles. Just as if I were to tap this container, the air bubbles released as well. So every time, once every minute, we're going to agitate and then tap. Okay, so now your nine and three quarter minutes has passed. We're going to take the vent lid off of our chemicals, our D76, and D76 cannot be reclaimed, so we're simply going to dump this one down the drain. Alright, then we're going to move to our second chemical in the process. The second chemical is Stop Bath. Stop Bath is only in the tank for 30 seconds, so I'm going to set my timer for 30 seconds. 
And again, we're just going to be able to agitate probably once during that time. So, pour the chemical in, start my timer, put the vent lid on. do it one more time at the very end of that 30 seconds. Then, once we're done with this, we're actually going to pour this back into our reclaim bottle so that it can be used again. When we reuse chemicals, we reclaim them. So reclaimed chemicals are chemicals that just have been used multiple times. Again, that saves money and the environment. The two chemicals that we reclaim in this process are stop bath and fixer. The third chemical in this process is fixer. We have our fixer all set. It's brought to 68 degrees. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. second hand gets back up to the zero, I'll go ahead and agitate again for five minutes. Okay. So our five minutes are up with our fixer. So at this point you can open your container and look at your film. Only after your film has been, has been in the fixer for five minutes can you do this. When you pull your film out of the fixer, it's going to be a transparent purple color. If your film is a milky purple color, if it's opaque, then it means that it hasn't fixed properly. If your film is opaque or a milky purple color, put your fixer, or put your lid back on your tank. I would toss out the fixer that's in here, pour a new fixer, and fix for another five minutes. If your film is transparent and slightly purple, um, then you have film that has been fixed properly. So, fixer, as we know, can be reclaimed. So, I'm going to take the reclaim jug, just pour my fixer back into the jug. Try to keep my area neat and dry. it twice. Now, in this sink we have we have a sink that's fitted with a hose that will fit into we have a special sink that has a hose that will fit down into the center of these reels. So we're simply going to turn on the water and fill up the tank twice. So, fill the tank up, empty out the water, fill the tank, and empty out the water. Now we move on to our permawash. We use permawash for two minutes. We agitate once each minute. Okay, my two minutes has passed. 
purple wash is not reclaimed. So again, we're simply going to pour the perma wash down the drain. After the perma wash, we're going to rinse our film for two minutes straight. So again, I'm going to take the hose from the sink. I'm simply going to insert it into the center of the reels, and I'm going to turn the water on gently, but enough so that it fills the, the tank several times and overflows. So water, clean water is consistently flushing for two minutes. Okay, so the two minutes is done. And my film is developed. Now, the final step in the process is to dip the film into the photo flow. The purpose of the photo flow is to get any of the mineral rich water that's on your film and allow it to very quickly and easily drip off of your film so that you don't have water spots on your film. You're simply going to dip it in once, dip it in twice, and you're not going to rinse the photo flow off. I simply shake it into the sink to get any of the excess photo flow off. Then you're going to very gently remove your film from the reel, trying again not to touch the film as much as possible. And this actually isn't black and white film, this is color film, so it's going to look a little different. But You'll take your film, attach one clip to the top, and then attach a second to the bottom so that it will hang straight. Hang it up in the film dryer. Up here we have our controls. You're going to turn the blue dot to 9 o'clock. That's a cool fan. That'll that'll dry your film, and it'll only take about 15 minutes to dry your film. These other settings have heat to them. You don't want to add heat to your film, so just turn it to 9 o'clock. Please just make sure that when you're at the end of the class that you've checked and that you've turned the fan off. You can always leave your film in here overnight with the fan off, and it'll still dry. This is a good safe place for your film to dry because um, it's enclosed and very little dust is going to be moving around in here. You want to try as much as possible to have a dust-free environment and to keep fingers off of your film. The very last step in the process is to clean up. So, I'm going to make sure that all of my chemicals are put away. I'm going to make sure that all of my pictures are washed off um, entirely and that all of my equipment is put back up onto the shelves. If you, could, if you use the last of a chemical in the process, please make sure that you let me know so that I know I need to make more chemicals for you. Um, if anything is missing, please let me know that as well. Um, and that's the process of developing film. The next thing I want to show you is how to get the correct temperature on the water in this sink. So. This sink, sink actually has a thermostat on it with a needle that will show you what the temperature is. I would recommend that you go for 68 degrees since that's what your chemicals need to be. But if you need colder or warmer, there's an easy way to change the temperature. This right here, this valve turns the water on and off. So very gently, I'm going to turn it on and the water will come out of this hose right here. In order to change the temperature, you can see that this dial right here has cold and hot on it with specific arrows. So if I need, right now the temperature is dropping, it's going lower than 68, so I want to make the water warmer. In this sink, you need to press and turn just slightly. The temperature moves pretty drastically even when you turn the valve just a little bit. So turn it a little bit and then check the temperature and turn it again if you need to. Um, this, this sink is, will be very helpful for you in getting your temperatures exact.